morning. Welcome to the max. Uh, before we kind of get started for the day, I've already milked. You see it's starting to be a beautiful day. We had the rains the last few days. I'm in short sleeve shirt and shorts. It's December 29th here in Mississippi. Um, usually that means a big storm is coming. However, right now it's not. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. It reminds you of like a maybe a March day here in Mississippi. But I'm going to check the pigs. If you remember, we moved the pigs. The net looks all intact. So that's a good sign. But I just need to make sure that they're okay. Always worries me anytime I move an animal to a new place. I always get a little nervous. Uh, even when I move my cows. Uh, when I move, my, move the pigs. Or when we move the chickens. Uh, it's nerve wracking. Just because you don't want anything to change. You don't want anything to get them. I had a hawk flying around yesterday, so I worried about my, my Cornish cross. I have bad wolves and uh, coyotes and bobcats all in these woods, so it scares me for these chickens and these pigs over here. So, you know, I'm just always getting nervous, getting nervous. Getting nervous. So we're going to go kind of do a walk around this morning, make sure that those pigs are okay and they look like they're okay. So let's, uh, let's go check them first before we get started for the day. Well, as you can see, as we walk towards the, the fence, look how good the grass is doing. It's beautiful over there. Beautiful paddock back there, too. Look at them. Doing great. All five of them are here. That's a good sign. Um, as you see, this is a garden plot. We'll move the chickens off of it uh, as it becomes a little bit. This will probably be a late summer garden plot. Um, here, we'll move the, the chick mobile, the cluck wagon and the fence over to where probably where the greens are way down there our greens are doing great um but you know i just want to check the pigs the pigs will probably when we move them they probably won't be moving with the chickens they'll probably be uh, getting ready to go to freezer camp because uh, we probably won't move these chickens or this netting probably for another i'd say five six months so if that's the case <laughs> That will probably be the end of the, chick, uh, the the pigs by then. So, um, but they're doing great. Can't complain. Let's go ahead and check everything else while we're over here. Solid start to look okay after that little storm we had last night. All that's covered. You see the rows. You can see the formation of the the rows here. Uh, we didn't want to hurt our rows. You see the beautiful green patch. Our greens have done very well this year. Uh, I've been very very pleased with them. One good thing about this warm weather is we've had our bees. Our bees have been out. They've been out the last few days. So everything's going good. Look how pretty these greens are. Man, they're gorgeous. We ate some last night. So, so, so good. We have collards and mustards that we grew. We actually found a few turnips in here, uh, which was kind of to our surprise. So it's probably some mixed seeds uh, over the time. But you see some grasses in there, but that's okay. There's nothing we can do to weed it out when we grow greens. So we'll, we'll silage tarp it and put the, the chickens over here. We'll silage tarp it right when this gets done, but then we'll put the chickens here whenever we get finished with that. So uh, everything's looking good. We'll make a quick run to the cows and then we will start our day. Hey y'all, I want to give you a follow up on the kombucha. So the first batch that you see me make and bottle with pineapple juice and apple juice, um, want two things. We poured it up, it did great, it tasted great. It was very, very strong. So we drank on it, but I almost had to dilute it down with a little bit of water and a little bit more juice. I did not get carbonation off of those when I bottled them up. Um, second thing, I don't think that I made the caps on my bottles as tight as they probably should have been. So after two days, I did attempt to burp them like every 12 hours and I was not getting any fizz, any carbonation on them at all. So this time, this is my second bottling batch. And this time what I did is I bottled these yesterday afternoon. So it's been probably a good 12 hours. And I made sure the tops were really, really tight. So now is my test to see how the carbonation has done. And I also want to taste them to see if I'm ready to put them in the refrigerator. It's probably not quite enough time yet um, 
just depends on the carbonation. So let's see how they do. I got just a little carbonation off of that. So I'm gonna tighten it back up. I heard it fizz just a little bit. Not really much on that. And not really much on that. So what I'm gonna do with these is I'm just going to put them back on my counter and I probably will recheck them again tomorrow. I'm gonna make sure my lids are real tight. Now I really want the carbonation, so I've been, I was a little bummed after two days last time that they didn't carbonate. Now I have read that you can leave these out on the counter anywhere from two days up to like a week. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm just gonna try to be patient and just wait. I think we were so excited last time, I just wasn't patient enough. So I'm just gonna leave these out until I get the good carbonation that I want. Last time after two days, I put them in the refrigerator. So this time I'm just going to um, wait a little bit longer and see how we do. So this is day um, our first day after we bottled these, I got a little carbonation off the big one, not really much off this one. So we're going to be patient this time. <laughs> this time and we're going to wait and I'll give you guys an update in several days. We're letting these fields over here behind the greens rest. Some of the fields that we, uh, we put some cottonseed mill on for nitrogen booster. Um, we got them in this little field. They've already ate this little field down. This is more of a little feed lot. I hate to say it like that because it's not a true stockyard feed lot, but we've got some hay here. They'll stay here eating this hay, eat some protein. And also they have access back to this little field that's got some grass that's still growing and we got some turnips and peas and all that kind of growing in there and they'll eat that. But basically see of course our barn run. They'll head that way probably this next week. We'll put them over there by the pond. If you remember the plot over there, they'll be on it come probably next well probably probably about two or three more days so uh they're looking great though elsa is about eight months bred now so she's got another about a month before she goes back into milk and having a calf beauty is she is little but she will have a, a calf probably around march or april she's about six months bred um of course you see daddy o and and Ike over there. So everybody, everything's going really good. Everything looks good this morning. A beautiful morning. Uh, you can't ask for a prettier morning than we're having right now. The birds are chirping. Uh, of course, the roosters are crowing and the bats are pad and beautiful, beautiful blue sky. So it's going to be a beautiful day. Um, I can't, I can't complain. We did take, uh, if you remember, we're trying to kind of put our, our, our chicks the chickens together too so we had the if you remember the incubator chickens that um, didn't, didn't do as well they had some health problems and then the chickens that uh miss broody and her friend um, hatched out both of those sets of chickens only a few live but we put those in there with the permaculture chickens as well so we freed up one coop over here and that's good of course you see peppa and george this is from the storm last night it's terrible so we gotta put some hay in here gotta put some hay in the hen coop over here just because it's been so terrible we've got some carrots growing we're fixing to redo these beds come very very soon um we did some weeding around some things look at our raised beds how good they've done i i, I commit this to hugo culture beds and then also uh, we've done some um some fish emulsion you see just the beautiful quality some of this cabbage growing spinach we've got some other cabbage it's salad 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 bowl um, lettuce this is my favorite lettuce this is a heirloom lettuce that we grow just quality is remarkable very light faint tasting we've got some broccoli spread out through here some have done okay some have not made it but that's okay you know we're going to start some more growth very very soon uh, over here in this bed we've got some onions and garlic growing already um, that was not the plan to plan this early, but we had them and they were sprouting, so why not? So over here we'll put some more, and then of course we will cut our asparagus back and then get ready for potatoes in these beds. So it's amazing how in De December you're already talking about feed starts and cool weather crops going into early spring. So always looking at one season ahead. So 
All right, meat birds are doing great. They're getting close to the freezer camp. Um, I'm not gonna tell you the hatchery I used, and we'll, we'll talk more about that because I'm gonna recommend one, and I'm not gonna recommend the other because these have been slow grow quarter straws, which ends up eating to your profit and costing you more money. So we'll talk about that when we come to butcher. I'm so, uh, very pleased with so far what the chickens and the pigs are looking like, cows are looking like this morning. Very pleased with uh, just the morning walk around. So um, we're gonna go in, eat breakfast with the kids, and then we'll come back out and do some chores that we actually need to do for the day, and we will have a wonderful morning. All right, y'all, this is the next day. So our bottles have set a full 24 hours and I have good news. So I don't know what went wrong with the batch the first time um, because this has been like a full two days here. So I don't know if it just needed to mature or whatever or if my tops were not tight, like I mentioned to y'all the day before. So I just gave this one a good shake and opened it up. And let's see if y'all can hear the... It might not do it again. Y'all heard that. Carbonation. So, um, let's do this one. Y'all heard it. There it goes. And we tried this one. We did this one a while ago and I drank it and it was amazing. So here we go on carbonation again. Awesome. Y'all see that? It's doing exactly what it was supposed to do. And I just, like I said, I gave them all a little shake. There he goes. And coming out of the top. Did y'all see that? We need to get that on camera. That is awesome. That's what we want right there. Here's this one. So we have our carbonation. This is very exciting um, because I was a little bummed when my last batch didn't do this. So I think the key is going to be getting that good seal. Now these are not going to be completely airtight, but it's airtight enough to do the job as you guys just seen. Um, this one is the one that I had tasted a while ago. So good, it's perfect. I wouldn't change anything about it, except for it needs to be cold. So I have these bad boys right where I want them. Like I said, we're on day number two of these setting out and they are perfect, so happy home setting, y'all.